uh, Tad Kubler of the Hold Steady. Tad is um, not only the guitar virtuoso for the Hold Steady, but he is also um, a pretty darn good photographer in his own right. Um, and he's been kind enough to um, have a few minutes with me before their show here at the 930 Club so that we could talk um, photography, basically, because it seems like he gets asked a lot of questions about music, and I figured photography might be a nice change of pace. Absolutely. <laughs> Um, and if you hear music in the background, that's their opening band. And who's their opening? Right on Dynamite. Right on Dynamite. So. Uh, Greenpoint, Brooklyn. Greenpoint, Brooklyn, definitely. Um, all right, so basically I'm kind of curious as to how you kind of got started in photography to begin with. Um, well, I guess, you know, I've always kind of been interested in it. But I think, I guess it started when I was about, oh, 20, probably 20, 23 or 24. Maybe a little bit older than that when I started taking it a little more seriously. Um, Bobby, our drummer, her sister was actually the one that got me kind of interested in photography on a more serious level. She was um, she's a photographer and she did um, uh, she kind of did a bunch of stuff. She also shoots as well. Right. Um, so I would say that probably Chrissy was the one who really got me um, thinking a lot more seriously about it. Uh, I went to school for a little bit, um, like a technical school, and learned kind of. Uh, you know, chemicals and properties of light and some of the physics and, and things like that of it. And then in Minneapolis there's a big advertising community so there's a lot of photographers and I started assisting probably in my mid-twenties and so I uh, dropped out of school um, when I started working full-time and I worked for a couple of different photographers in Minneapolis and uh, they, they had both, both those guys um, oddly enough were at Brooks out in uh, Santa Barbara, which is a big, um, a big photography school, and it, I think it concentrates. I don't know about now, but I know, you know, back when those guys were there, it was a very technical school in terms of, um, like I said, the properties of light and the physics of how things work and, and um, stuff like that. So they were great to learn from because it was um, less of a kind of an artistic. Um, I guess aesthetic as opposed to um, really learning I think well, you know how things operate and and you know like uh, light falls off its subject uh, it was the square the square root of its distance or something you know stuff like that and I learned a lot of that stuff from those guys so it was good to have that kind of background. Sure yeah it sounds, it sounds like it. Um, so what was the uh, what was the first camera you ever owned? Um, I had an old Minolta um, with just a 50 millimeter lens. That was my first camera. And then I got um, a couple old Nikon FMs. Really? Yeah. Um, do you prefer, do you have a preference for um, um, digital versus the... I mean, I like film. Um, obviously, the, the, the film argument is a lot, is really comparable to the, you know, the digital to film is, 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 is comparable to the analog. Um, digital <laughs> argument and recording and stuff like that, sure. but um, or you know, vinyl versus CDs. So I mean, I like film is great to have. It's a great way to ar archive stuff as opposed to digital files can get corrupted and you can lose them. Um, where once you've got once you've got a you know a sheet of negatives, you, you always have those, assuming you store them someplace you know remotely um, or that's relatively safe. Um, which for me, it's I don't I'm not that organized. In my, I got shit strewn all over New York at this point in storage places and old apartments and stuff like that. So. <laughs> as long as you're paying the rent, on yeah. it, I think it'll be alright. Yeah, so I mean, you know, digital is great because, um, I mean, nowadays everything goes digital eventually, even with negatives, you scan negatives, um, and, and, you know, there's retouching and stuff like that, and it's, that makes it a little easier, but um, I was just having this conversation uh, with somebody the other day about, like, I used to love to spend time in the dark room with my Walkman on. And somebody was like, Walkman? You know, what's that? And I was like, oh, this was before iPods. <laughs> so uh, I dated myself a little bit there, too. Right. Um, but, uh, but you know, it was it was fun to print. You know, I, I learned, you know, black and white first. And I've done some color printing, but that's... Um, both are great art forms. Color printing is something that you don't get to do very often because you can't make your own lab in your bathroom or your kitchen or someplace like that. You have to go where they've got a... You know, color and even if you have a color enlarger, you can't. You know, you can't process prints because you got to have a huge. 
machine for that stuff. So. So the um, you said that the first. So what was your so your first regular film camera was yeah. the Nikon. Yeah, probably like when I first got serious about it, I had some Nikon thirty fives and then some Pentax six sevens mm -hmm. were my first. Actually, I think I probably had a Roly before I had the Pentax six sevens. A Roly? Yeah, a Rolleiflex. Rolleiflex. Yeah, okay. one twenty. Um, the pen, which are really great cameras. Um, uh, and I had a Hasselblad at one point. Hasselblad, I like the I like the square format of yeah. the Rollies and the Hasselblads. But one thing that's nice about Pentax is they're, especially if you shoot portraits or people, which is kind of what I prefer to do. They're a lot. They're a little more forgiving. Um, like the Hasselblads and the Roll Rollies are really sharp cameras, so you can see everything and you know people's pores and, and sometimes <laughs> the not so flattering parts of people where. The six sevens aren't quite. They're not. You know, they're not as sharp and they're softer. The format's nice too because it's it's just it's like you hold it like a thirty five only bigger where you're not looking down to a you know a viewfinder or something like that. You just you put them to your eye and right. stuff, stuff like that. I wonder if Chuck Close uses uh, Hasselblads then because he always seems to show minute pores. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> I sell square format stuff too. Yeah. Sure. The Mamiya's um, are also uh, the same format as the Pentax, but once again, those are sharper cameras. The Pentaxes are nice, once again, because they feel like, when you hold them in your hands, they feel like a 35 millimeter, just a little bit larger and heavier. Um, but they wind the same way and stuff, so it's it's nice to go back and forth between those. And if you're used to shooting a lot of 35. What, um, so why did you move then from, normally when people uh, kind of sign on, they either go Nikon and stay Nikon, mostly because of the lenses, mm -hmm. you know? But, um, so why is it that you went from a Nikon film to, I know that you're a Canon shooter now. Yeah, well, Canon, um, all the, the the EOS cameras, they all, the Canon says they have bigger lens ports, so they have big faster lenses than Nikon. Also, a lot of the newer Canon stuff is, I think, more user friendly than some of the Nikon, yeah. um, which I don't, the Nikon stuff, the, especially the digital and some of the newer film cameras, have all these bells and whistles on them that are really difficult to figure out. The Canon ones are really simple. Um, at that and they just they have a you know the body has a larger lens port so they've got they've got like you know you can get the the like the 50 millimeter I think that's a 1.2 the 85 that's a 1.2 which is a huge piece of glass it's a really nice lens right right um, so you um, ended up just switching what what was your first uh, digital camera um, well my first digital is probably one of those little Canon power shots which I still use a ton. Um, and I love it. It's kind of, I think I feel like those Canon power shots are sort of the Yashica T4s of digital. Um, you know, it's like the, I have a bunch of, we used to be have this group in New York called the T4 Army. You know the Yashicas I'm talking about? Uh, I looked you it up the, actually, yeah. and it's in, for, um, for, if nobody decides to look it up, um, basically the T4 is okay. like, it's like a point and shoot, but it's got the coolest thing and then it's got a 24 to 70 range. And well, like the, the the ones that the 35 millimeter, just the fixed lens ones are the best. Oh. I don't I don't have, they're those are sharper. I don't have one of the zoom ones. Oh. But they've got the super scope on them, so you can kind of do cool stuff in bars and look through them that way. It's almost like a you know like a Hasselblad where you look through the top of it. Oh, wow. So it's called a super scope on the top, which is really cool. And it's a Zeiss lens. It's essentially, I mean, they were selling for like 180 dollars. Um, so a, a lot of the assistants that I worked with in New York, we all had those mm -hmm. and did a, a ton of work. But it's like, it's kind of the classic Terry Richardson style too, where the on-camera flash and everything's blown out. I know that he uses a T4 in a lot of stuff. Okay. And you, you were part of the T4 army you were talking yeah, about? Yeah, it was, it was a bunch, it was like, it was kind of, the, the, there's the T4 army and the Swedish mafia that used to be in New York. It's like all the assistants, if you worked with anybody good, um, like Mark Seliger or um, Mark Ohm, Judson Baker, Doug Ordway, uh, Max Viducal, like all the big fashion guys and celebrity guys in New York always had, there was like probably eight or nine of these kids from Sweden that all came over and were assisting kind of the best people. So if you didn't know one of those guys, you couldn't work for anybody that was, you know, really, I guess, uh, that's, I mean, that that's a, a kind of a real broad generalization, but you had to be in with one of those guys to kind of work for somebody that was good.